wireless TV or you know or we have a wireless mic now that we use. If you want to move around the wi wireless mic, you put your left side in the middle, put it in the middle, right side in the middle. You can use this as well. Right now it's just a slight right now it's just a little right here so it's not too bad. Testing. Oh yeah. I'll be back here if anything happens. Just give yeah, give me all your feedback. Yeah, thanks for coming.
First million. <laughs> then you can probably start with me.
raise the attention. Thank you all for uh, making it to Grand Rounds today. Um, and I just wanted to go ahead and introduce our speaker here. Um, our speaker is uh, Peter Bake. Uh, he'll be speaking on uh, lung cancer, current trends, and staging. Uh, our program is underwritten by an educational grant through the uh, OSU Medical Center and Graduate Medical Education. Uh, disclosure statement has been signed and is on file with the uh, Graduate Medical Education Office. Uh, Dr. Bake uh, completed his uh, family medicine internship at uh, Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Uh, he then completed a general surgery residency at uh, St. Uh, Barnabas uh, Hospital in Bronx, New York for one year and then went to uh, Arrowhead uh, Regional Medical Center in Colton, California, uh, where he completed his general surgery residency. Uh, he then went on to complete a two-year cardiothoracic uh, surgery residency at the Miller School of Medicine at Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami, Florida. And uh, lastly, he completed a fellowship in minimally invasive esophageal and thoracic surgery at the Swedish Medical Center in Seattle, Washington. Uh, Dr. Bake is currently a uh, staff thoracic surgeon at Cancer Treatment Centers of America here in Tulsa. Uh, he helps train uh, our residents as well as the OU residents uh, who join him there. Uh, please welcome uh, Dr. Bake. Thank you everyone um, for having me here today. Um, it's actually interesting to be on this side of Grand Rounds instead of sitting at you guys and soon enough you guys will be there. Um, but today I want to talk about the staging. You know, we talk about cancers, colon cancer, um, you know, esophageal cancer, lung cancer. The staging is very important. And w uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah? Um, so one of the things is, um, especially in lung cancer, is um, how important it is to correctly stage all these patients. So financial dis uh, disclosures, I don't have any other than being you know, employees, uh, um, employee uh, position. So I'm gonna introduce then this presentation, then current staging and guidelines, methods for staging, and recommendations and summary. So introduction wise, according to Lung Cancer Institute, and this website is, I'm putting all these uh, web addresses there because those are really good resources for not just lung cancer, but like any type of cancer. Uh, for from cedar.cancer.org. And according to that website, which is you know, from the National Cancer Institute, so it's the most legit information, um, it's the second most common cancer in both men and women. And in 2013, estimated 200, over 200,000 new cases and evenly distribu uh, distributed between males and females. But of those, and also in 2013, estimated about 160,000 people would die from the cancer itself. Lung cancer will consist of about 27% of all cancer deaths. And the average time, um, uh, average age at time of diagnosis is about 70 years old. So um, this is a data that I thought was really interesting. For between 2004 and 2010, five-year lung cancer survival rate is 15.8%. But if you look at colon cancer, which we talk about a lot, or breast cancer, it's over 64% or 90% for breast cancer. Only cancer that doesn't do as well, pancreatic and liver, biliary cancer. This um, shows how bad lung cancer is because the death caused by lung cancer is actually greater than colon plus breast plus prostate combined together. And in this table, I mean, actually, it's combined combination of all. Sorry, I got sugar happy. All these cancers together. And so, I mean, it's a, a major um, ca uh, cause of death. And um, it is something that I know the um, NIH and uh, it's not really spending as much money compared to breast cancer or prostate cancer. But it is something that we should definitely um, have more funds to do more research. This is a, actually a really sad data. If you look at the 1975, five-year relative survival was less than 4%. And um, you guys can't really see this number because of the picture in picture. Is, um, 
It's 17.5 years, actually. Since 2006. Okay? I mean, in, you know, 30 years, only 6, 7% brain freeze. Um, in five years survival, when compared to colon, went from 48 to uh, almost 70, uh, 66 percent. Breast went from 75 to 90 percent, and even liver, which is worse, uh, has uh, went from three percent to six, uh, 70 percent. And so, even though we have we learned a lot about lung cancer, we still have a uh, long ways to go to improve this uh, five-year relative survival. So this is a patient, actually, one of the first patients that I saw when I, once I started working at CCCA, 45-year-old um, female from Arkansas. She complained with hemoptysis and um, has medical history of hypertension, GERD, has surgical history, uh, um, gynecological stuff, um, social history. She smoked 60 pack year um, history of smoking, um, and, but no drug and moderate alcohol use. And of course, she was a nurse at prison and still smoked like a chimney. Her ECOG performance status was zero. I don't know if many of you guys know ECOG status, but it is something that we use a lot in surgery, especially in thoracic surgery, and it's a performance status. And zero means fully active, able to carry on all um, pre-disease uh, pre performance without restriction, and of course, five is thin. And so she's um, excellent health other than history of smoking and this style, uh, hemoptysis. She um, got a CT scan, and um, she was found to have this lesion in the um, left, uh, left upper lobe mass here. And here's the PET scan, SVG of 34, really high, right? Along with hyalur mass, uh, SVG of 64. And then right paratracheal right there, um, no SVG of 3. But of course, it's still positive because baseline was 2. So, 60 year, 60 year, uh, 60 pack year history of smoking, lung mass, looks like nodal disease, which is lung cancer and proven otherwise. So she had a, a biopsy of the nodule, or the nodule, and um, it was found to be moderately differentiated animal carcinoma, CTF1 positive and CTF5 6 negative. And this is a whole, the immunohistochemical staining is a whole new lecture that I'm not gonna go through, but if you see CTF, it's a, uh, Thyroid transcription factor for you guys. Um, it's either in thyroid cancer or lung area carcinoma. That's it. So if you see CTF positive, it's gonna be lung or thyroid. Those are in the question. Brain MRI was negative. Um, and she was being clinical stage 3B, C1B, N3, N0, and treatment, uh, she got chemotherapy concurrently with um, radiation. And I will go through the clinical stage, how she was doing. This NCCN guideline is an excellent source for treatment guidelines. This is what all the most major cancer centers rely on. This is the protocol that they use. Um, and of course, at CCCA, we see a lot of patients who are outliers um, that can't, we can't really follow the guidelines anymore. But it's a really good source for you guys to actually see, to follow and know about. But it gets kind of confusing because they have all these tables and they see this or see this, go to this page. and. But the important thing is, it's out there. We should follow these guidelines. And to me, again, for a lung cancer, key staging is important. How uh, is the size, where it's invading, but, and end stage is important. But to me, the most important thing as a thoracic surgeon is this um, regional lymph node status. Um, and N0 is none. N1 is uh, ipsilateral. Um, a peribronchial or ipsilateral hyalur lymph node, N2 is medial frontal node, ipsilateral, or N3 is contralateral. So the if you look at it for you know for students and residents, you guys have to kind of memorize all these tables and you know, stages. Important, easy way to remember this for at least the end stage is. If you, anyone has N2, it's automatically stage 3A. If anyone has N3, automatically 3B. Of course, T4 is a um, bad one, so it automatically someone has T4 becomes 3A. So it's 
PGA remember that part? Per NCCN guideline, what are the treatments? Stage one and two, if the patient is operable, if because there's zero, one, and ten screws, um, they could undergo resection, they, they will go resection, and they're resected. If they are inoperable, if, the, if um, the, they don't have any uh, lymph node involvement, then they get radiated. Um, and if it's L1, they get chemo radiation. It takes three years. So if you expect some chemo radiation, it takes three years. Or three years of chemo radiation, three stage, plus minus surgery, then plus minus chemotherapy after. For stage B, if you get the uh, patient is not operable, So according to what you see in MRI record, stage B, you have a very good patient. <coughs> so why is stage B uh, really doing a lymph node therapy here? So this is a tissue injury from the um, international association uh, for the study of lung cancer in Malaysia. It's a uh, stage of uh, chemo therapy. Um, from this tissue, you see this lesion area. course, five years is uh, worse than two years in Malaysia. Then Chinese lymph node treats better. But how come PA was better in that lesion? Well, this was because of research and innovation. And so once they realized that anyone with research and innovation, those patients are not on lymph node therapy, but they get chemo therapy. And now what they have done here is they have lymph and they get the disease. And this is where the demand and the what you need to get to. survival, then protect the second five year survival rate. Skip. So PET scan, um, just for the sake of for the beginning. Um, PET scan should be performed before biopsy. Why? PET scan is a um, scan that's used every week. It's a uh, radio label operator. Um, and it's every six months in a radio and every six months later. And the reason is many many things. Well, let's see a reason and they could be false positives due to inflammation or infection, great form of infection or symptom of disease. And false negatives uh, due to small and low metabolism in the heart. Um, sensitivity and canal is 50% of people. That's the empirical reason. Again, it's not going to make a difference if you perform PET scan or PET scan. Recommendation is when the patient is chemo radiated. 
ਤਹਿਸੀਲ ਆਫਿਸ ਤੇ ਪੁਲਿਸ ਨੂੰ ਹਰ ਚੀਜ਼ ਦੀ ਸਹੂਲਤ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਜਾਏਗੀ ਸਿੱਖ ਸਿਵਲੀ ਸਲਾਹ ਸਿੱਖ ਸੰਸਥਾ ਸਾਹਿਤ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਸਿੱਖ ਅਤੇ ਮੰਦਰ ਸਮਾਜ ਦੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਪੰਜ ਆਗੂ ਨੇ ਫੋਰ ਯੂ ਐਸ Thank you. 
that's the Golden Gate Bridge. And then we also have the Fred Bell's Falls Bridge. But I don't know what those are. I just know that they're not the same thing. So that's the one that I can know uh, for sure. You just have to know the name of the major bridge that you're going to see. And so what are some of the common ones? Uh, you can think about it that way. So the major bridge that you're going to see there is the Pacific they tell you about the Atlantic Ocean. That's a pretty that's a better guess. A lot of those names are pretty darn good. Okay. And the Indian Ocean, that's probably the same thing. And one of the things that we always know that it's uh, definitely from the North America. And if you get the northern ones, it's from North America. And it's gonna have it's gonna be from Africa or Asia. And I think there's gonna be a little bit of Dubai in there. <laughs> Unidora. Czechia and then there's Slovenia and those are natural ones and you're going to know Quebec and you can see a lot of that from just North America and a lot of it is big bridge as well but the big one is the Canal uh, the Grand Canal or the Grand Canal so there's definitely a lot of them and then you have the Hudson The most important one for me is um, the thing that spoke out uh, today. And it was pretty unique. Uh, so it's the Hudson Bridge and it's the Four by Four Bridge. It's like a double bridge. And it's either by the Atlantic or the Pacific. I think that one's pretty cool. So it's a double bridge. So that is 203 from the Delta Airport. And then my last thing was that Melbourne one. Um, and I was just like, why not? You just have to take it that way. And then you get to see it. So I took it in. So what did I do?
issue of and uh, we just got a very interesting tweet if you go by Twitter and Twitter more it's not a good thing uh, it's not a good thing either Does that make sense to you guys? 